Okay, so I gave you guys these problems to try while we were waiting for the connection to get up here. For the first one, now remember the big thing is there's, there's three types of relationships we can have. You can have two numbers that have to equal each other. You have two numbers that have to add up to a certain total. Or you can have two numbers that subtract to make a given difference. We have two of those cases here. In this first problem here, what's the case? They add up to 180. So 2x plus 1 plus 6x plus 19 has to add up to 180. So then our first step is to combine what we can combine. Here's our equal sign. On the left side, I can combine 6, 2x and 6x to make, eight, make 8x. And then I can combine 1 and 19 to make positive 20. And now this is an equation we know how to solve. What do I do? Subtract 20. 8x equals 160. And then divide by 8. So x equals 20. Are we done? No. What do we have to do? Perfect. Put x in here to figure out what the angles are. So 2 times x becomes 2 times 20 plus 1. 2 times 20 is 40 plus 1 is 41. So this angle here is 41 degrees. Up here, 6 times x becomes 6 times 20 plus 19. 6 times 20 is 120 plus 19 is 139. So this is 139 degrees. We can double check it. What do those two have to add to? 180. Do they? Yes, they do. In this second case over here, what is the situation there? Those two angles have to equal each other. Those are vertical angles. So 8x minus 14 has to equal 6x plus 24. How do we solve that equation? You have to get the x on one side. So we have to get rid of one of the x's. So which one are we getting rid of? Doesn't matter which one, but usually we'll go up to the smaller one first. So we'll get rid of the 6x. That way we don't have to work with negatives. So all that's left over there is 24. We have to take 6x away from the left side. And the only spot we can do that is from the 8x. 8x minus 6x is 2x and minus 14. Now we're going to add 14. 2x equals 24 plus 14 is 38. Divide by 2. x equals 19. Are we done? I have to go back and have to put 19 in for x to get our answers for our results for each angle. This is going to be 8 times 19 minus 14. Okay, so 8 times 19 is going to be what? 152 minus 14 is going to be 138. Let's double check to make sure this one comes up the same. 6 times 19 plus 24. 6 times 19 is 114 plus 24 is 138 degrees. So they do come out to be the same. Any questions? A similar problem to those. A rectangle has length that is 11 more than its width. If the perimeter is
142, find the length and the width. I'm going to give you guys a minute, see what you can do here. Remember the formula, perimeter is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So I'm going to give you a minute and see what you come up with, and then we'll go over that one. I like to draw a rectangle for these. We have our length and our width. And of course, we know over here, we know the number for the perimeter is the 142. But we need to come up with some way to represent either the length or the width, so we're down to a single variable. And in this problem, what's that going to be? The length is 11 more than the width. What does that mean? The length is 11 plus W or W plus 11. So when we come back over here, instead of 2 times L, it's going to be 2 times, we're going to put in parentheses, W plus 11. Now we have to have the parentheses there because all of L is being multiplied by 2, so the W plus 11 has to all be multiplied by 2. Plus 2W is just going to stay 2W. Now it's just a matter of order of operations. I'm not going to do anything with the 142 yet. On the right side, what has to happen first? We see our parentheses. Nothing to do inside the parentheses, so we're going to have to multiply by the 2. So 2 times W, 2W, then... 2 times 11 is talkative group tonight. Positive 22 and then 2w. Then what do we need to do? Combine like terms. We've got 2w and 2w. So 142 is going to stay the same. 2w and 2w. 4w plus 22. Then what? Now we're just going to solve. We subtract 22. 120 equals the 22 is gone, so we just have 4w. And then divide by 4. 30 equals w, or w equals 30. Now what? That tells us our width is 30. What about our length? It's 30 plus 11, W plus 11, or 41. Any questions? Okay, so a similar question to that might look like this. The length of a rectangle is three times its width. The perimeter is 480. Find the length and the width. Again, I'll give you a couple minutes to see what you come up with. So in our rectangle, we have the length and the width. Perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. The perimeter is 480. What are we going to do with the length this time? W times 3 or 3 times W, yes. So instead of 2 times L, it's going to be 2 times... 3w plus the 2w that's over here yet. So now we're going to do some simplification, combining things on the right side there. What do we have to do first? 2 times 3w, 6w plus 2w, and then 
2 6w plus 2w is 8w and then add 90 so 60 equals w bless you so the width equals 60 the length is 3 times w or 3 times 60 or 180 so a width of 60 a length of 180 any questions there? Bless you again. Okay. In both equations, you're trying to find both the length and the width. It's just in this one, it says the length is three times the width. So the length is 3 times w, three, you know, a number times w. Up here, we said the length is a certain number more than the width. This one was 11 more than the width. So the length was w plus 11, or plus a number. But in both cases, you're finding both. It's just the length is done in terms of the width. Now, it is possible to have one of those equations where you're, you're finding l, and you're using l to find w. So you could have one like this, where it says the width of a rectangle is 3 less than the length. The perimeter is 74. Find length and width. So here I have my width and I have my length. But this time I'm told that the width is 3 less than the length. So the width is the length minus 3. So over here my perimeter is 74, that's just a number going in there. 2 times my length, the length isn't going to change. It's that the width is 3 less than the length. So 2 times w becomes 2 times l minus 3. So then what would we do next there? We have the parentheses. Nothing to do in them, so we're going to multiply by the 2. two perfect. 2 times L is 2L. You got it. 2 times negative 3 is a negative 6. Now this is a positive, so I'm going to put a plus in front of it because there's other things in front of it, the other 2L. Now we have to combine. 2L and 2L will make 4L. Minus 6. And now we're just going to solve. So we're going to add 6. So 80 equals 4L. And divide by 4. So 20 equals L. So now L equals 20, and we have to find the length from that. Or the width from that. The width is the length minus 3, so 20 minus 3. 17 for the width. So it's not always W that's going to end up staying in the formula. Sometimes it can be L. Any other questions? Okay. Well, today we're going to look at some other things. We're going to, we're going to still work with the perimeter a little bit here, but we're going to look at some other things as well. We want to start working a little bit more with our variables. But to work with those variables more, we want to review our rules of powers. We've seen this, 8 to the third power, which of course means yeah, 3 eighths multiplied together. Multiplies up to 512. Have all of you figured out how to do that on your calculators? Good. And we've briefly talked about you know, x to the third, meaning 
x times x times x. So to review, what's x to the third times x to the fourth? Good. X to the seventh. If you can't remember, now remember there's only two possibilities. You can either add the powers or multiply the powers. If you can't remember, you can always write it out. X to the third is 3x's multiplied together. X to the fourth is 4x's multiplied together. If I'm multiplying them all together, I have now a total of 7x's multiplied together. So x to the seventh. x to the 8th times x to the 15th then gives me 15. x to the 23rd. Good. Just 8 plus 15 gives us 23. x to the 4th to the 3rd power. You want to venture a guess? x to the 12. Good. What's happening there is you have x to the 4th times x to the 4th times x to the 4th. That third power means there's three of them being multiplied together. I could write them all out now. You know, 4x is there, 4x is there, and 4x is there. You could count them out and get there get 12 of them. Or you could just look at, we're multiplying, so we're going to add powers. 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. So when we have an exponent that is raised to another power, the powers just get multiplied. So what if I have eight x to the fifth times eleven x to the third? What's going to happen there? Well, we multiply the numbers. Perfect. 8 and 11 make 88. Then we multiply the, the names of the variables. x to the 5th times x to the 3rd. x to the 8th. Remember, when you're multiplying the exponents, you add the powers. How about here? Negative 7x to the 5th times 2x to the 8th. We're going to multiply the numbers. Negative 7 times 2. Perfect. Negative 14. Then the variables. x to the 5th times x to the 8th. 5 plus 8 is 13. x to the 13th. What if? Negative, sorry, 9 x to the 8th y to the 3rd z times 3 y to the 7th z squared. Where do I start? 9 times 3 is 27. What's next? x to the 8th and there's nothing to combine it with x to the 8th, and then y to the 3rd and y to the 7th is y to the 10th, and then z to the 3rd, good, z, think of that as z to the 1, so z and z to the 2nd, 1 plus 2 is 3, so z to the 3rd, perfect. So what if I have a number in there with the power? Is this going to be 5 times 3 is 15? No. The number still has to be raised to the power. 5 to the third is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. 
Then we work with the variables like we did before. X to the eighth to the third power will be X to the, careful, 24. When it's a power to another power, you multiply. Eight times three is 24. Y to the sixth. In your notes, I want you to take a look at this one and see what you come up with. I know we haven't done one quite this difficult yet, but I want to see what you can come up with. See if you can put it all together and we'll talk about it. Let's see how you did. So we start out with the first parentheses. Nothing to do in the parentheses. So we see if there's anything we can do to the parentheses, which is times the 5x squared y to the fifth. So you're going to multiply. 5x squared y to the 5th times 8x to the 7th y. What do we get? 40x to the 9th. 2 plus 7 is 9. When you're multiplying, you add. y to the 5th times y is y to the 6th. Good. So 5 times 8 is 40. x squared times x to the 7th becomes x to the 9th. When you're multiplying exponents, you add powers. So now we have 5x squared y to the 5th times negative 3x to the 4th y to the 4th. 5 times negative 3, negative 15. x squared times x to the 4th, x to the 6th. And y to the 5th times y to the 4th, y to the 9th. Can I subtract those since they are both x and y and the powers are 6 and 9? No, they're the same variables and they're the same powers, but the powers aren't on the same variables. Are they? x to the 9th, y to the 6th, and it's y to the 6th, or x to the 9th, y to the 6th, and x to the 6th, y to the 9th. Cannot combine those with addition or subtraction. Over here now, we have a power. 3x to the third, y squared to the third power. Where do we start on that one? 3 to the third power is 27. It's three threes multiplied together, so 3 times 3 times 3. x to the third to the third power. x to the ninth. Good. When we take a power of a power, you end up multiplying the powers. So 3 times 3 is 9. And y to the 6th. Good. How many of you had that one right? Just... How come I don't combine what's in the parentheses? Because this is x to the 7th y and this is x to the 4th y to the 4th. No, nope. well, it is x to the seventh times y, but x to the seventh times y is just x to the seventh y. Well, I mean, I'll individually take like eight and then x to the seventh times y. Um, eight. It is actually, technically it is eight times x to the seventh times y, but there's nothing you can do to combine them anymore. Yeah. Eight and three and then x to the seventh and four. No, because when you add or subtract, and this is subtraction here. When you add or subtract, you must have exactly the same name, and the variables are the names. So since those are different names, you can't combine those. If you are multiplying, you can combine them. The reason we can combine this with that is because we're multiplying there, not adding or subtracting. So they have, they have different names there as well, but we're multiplying, so we can combine them. Here we're subtracting, so we cannot combine those two. Good. Question on enrichment?
Okay. That's a very good question. And that can cause some issues. By the way, am I done here? No. There are two of them that have exactly the same name. These are both x to the ninth, y to the sixth. x to the ninth, y to the sixth. So I can combine those. 40 and positive 27 is 6, 67. When I add or subtract, I keep the same name. So there's a, a few things here. I'm going to answer your question, too, in the process of this. Um, a few things here I want to point out. Remember, when we add or subtract 1, we must have the same name. When we multiply or divide, we don't We don't need the same name. So what that means is 4x squared plus 9x to the fifth cannot be added. It stays 4x squared plus 9x to the fifth. 4x squared times 9x to the fifth. We can multiply because we don't need the same name. We're just going to combine the counts. 4 times 9 is 36. And then also combine the names. x squared times x to the fifth. Remember, when we're multiplying variables with powers, we add the powers. 2 plus 5 is 7. The second thing to remember, we're going to combine the counts either way. But when we add, we simply keep the same name. When we multiply, we also combine the name. So what that means for us, when we add, if I have the same, I, I must have the same name to add. So if I do have the same name, 7y to the third plus 11y to the third, I can combine those because they're both y to the thirds. They have the same name, which I must have to add or subtract. I'm going to combine the counts. 7 plus 11 is 18. Do I add the powers? No, because when I add or subtract, I keep the same name. That stays y to the third. So when I add or subtract, the powers should never change. They have to be the same to start with. And then we don't do anything with them after that. The, the powers in our answer will be the same as the powers in the problem. They cannot change. When we multiply or divide, however, let's say we have 7y to the third times 11y to the third. We didn't need the same name, but it doesn't matter if we have it. We're going to multiply the count. 7 times 11 is 77. And we're going to also combine the names. y to the third times y to the third is y to the sixth. When we multiply, you combine the names. And when you multiply variables with powers, you add the powers. So to review, x to the fifth plus x to the fifth is going to give us x to the fifth. There's, we've got to think of it as one and one, so we're going to get two. You still have to combine the counts, but the name is going to stay the same. x to the third times x to the third. You're going to combine the counts, but 1 times 1 is still 1. Then you combine the names. x to the third times x to the third. We add the powers when we're multiplying to give us x to the sixth. If I have x to the third plus x to the seventh, I'm going to get 
x to the third plus x to the seventh. There's nothing more I can do there because they're not the same name. If I have x to the third times x to the seventh, I don't need the same name. This is still 1 and 1, so it's still 1. x to the third times x to the seventh is x to the 3 plus 7, or x to the 10. Then the final thing we have is powers. x to the fifth to the power of 3. That's going to be x to the 5 times 3, or x to the 15th. Now, when we put numbers with these, 7x to the fifth plus 3x to the eighth, what are we going to get? Trick question. 7x to the fifth plus 3x to the eighth. It does not change. If I have... 8x to the 4th times 2x to the 9th. What am I going to get? Perfect. The big thing, people look at this and they think, oh, when we're multiplying, we're going to add. Well, that's only true for the powers. The numbers, however, still multiply. 8 times 2 is still 16. It's just x to the 4th times x to the 9th is x to the... 4 plus 9 is 13. And then if we have a power, 5x to the 7th to the 4th power, it is still going to be 5 to the power of 4, which is 625. The number still has to do a power, a regular power. Then x to the 7th to the power of 4, 7 times 4 is 28, so that will be x to the 28th. Does that make a little more sense? Good. It is actually time for our break, so let's go ahead and take our break. Um, when we come back, we'll talk about this stuff a little bit more.